Hey everyone, A League of Their Own and Kyle back with another video. Hey YouTube. We'd like to thank everyone for the positive response to our first collab video, which highlighted Kyle's Perez Steel collection. Now today, we're going to do something a little bit different from the Tigers. Bowman53 wanted to know, why the Tigers? And that's a great question. So although we're Canadian, geographically, Detroit is actually considered the home team. Sorry, Blue Jay fans. <laughs> We grew up as Tigers fans, thanks to our parents, and frequently attended Tiger Stadium and Comerica Park as a family. And to this day, my favorite people to go to the game with will always be my family. Our dad also continues to remind us that 1984 was the best year of his life. And the reason for that was in 1984, that's the last time that the Tigers uh, won the World Series. And that's also the year that he married our mom. Now, personally, Kyle and I started playing baseball at seven. I played center field. I played second base as well as shortstop. And baseball was and is our favorite and prime sport. We both continued to play competitively as we got older. And when we were kids, our family developed a close relationship with a major league ball player. That is our greatest personal story, and the experiences that came with it deserve its own future video that we look forward to sharing. Now, regarding the hobby, Kyle and I are both history buffs. We appreciate and value baseball's historic tradition, and collecting allows us to own a small piece of the game, the players, and the sport that we love. So in this video, we'd like to show you a few Cleveland Indians all-time greats. This is really tough for us on this one. Yeah, division, division rivals. It's hard <laughs> for us to go there, but uh, we will. So these players, they're all in the National Baseball Hall of Fame and the Cleveland Indians Hall of Fame. They are also all pitchers that dominated in their respective era. So first up, we have this Bob Lemon, which is signed beautifully on the celebration set. Now, the celebration set was produced to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Baseball Hall of Fame, and that was in 1989. So this really is a great looking set. Is there a particular series of Perez Steel that you prefer, Kyle? No, for me, I just uh, enjoy all the Perez Steel cards. Uh, I don't prefer uh, the Celebration set or 1981 as an example. If the card looks good, uh, then I, I'd like to have it in my collection. I don't uh, particularly have a, a preference. Awesome. So next from Series 5 of Perez Steel, we have the Great Early Win. Now, Kyle, is there something in particular that drew you to picking up this card? For me, it was his autograph, the cursive writing. If you look actually at the Ys, it, it just looks gorgeous. It looks uh, amazing. Uh, you can see how detailed it is. It looks fantastic in the blue Sharpie. And not to mention, uh, as part of his accolades, he won uh, 300 games. So great to have. And he, he's a card that I didn't see on, on eBay too often, so when it popped up, I, I had to pull the trigger. Yeah, I agree. I really love that card. I think the autograph is the best-looking aspect of that card, for sure. So, next up, you already know that I love his 1953 tops, and I'm also a big fan of his Perez Steel postcard. So, this is legendary pitcher Bob Feller. And this particular card is from the third series of Perez Steel. Did you pick this one up recently? I did pick this one up recently. Uh, it looks great uh, in the new PSA Lighthouse holder. Again, the price was right for me and the autograph, it, it's, it's stunning. It does look really sharp there, signed in blue Sharpie. I don't see this one too often pop up on eBay, so I think it was good that you jumped on it when you did. So 
So the final card that we're going to share with you today is arguably one of the best in Kyle's collection. It is a beautiful cut signature that is taken from this player's autobiography titled Maybe I'll Pitch Forever. It is none other than baseball legend Satchel Page. I love how it reads, Maybe I'll Pitch Forever, underneath his signature. At age 42, Satchel became the oldest player to debut in the major leagues. And despite his age, he continued to tour regularly for hefty appearance fees. I think it's too bad that Satchel Paige wasn't able to pitch the prime of his career in the majors, but always a showman, and this was a really exciting card, I know, for you to pick up, Kyle. Definitely. I think another aspect of this card, more of a historical fact, is in 1948, he was the first Negro League pitcher to appear and pitch in the World Series. Yeah, I agree. I think that's pretty neat, too. Now, at 59, Satchel, he became the oldest player in Major League history. He marked that occasion by throwing three scoreless innings and allowing just one hit for the Kansas City A's. Now, Satchel himself rarely addressed the issue of his age, saying that age is really just a question of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. So, words to live by right there, and a great card to own. Not going to lie, I wish this card were mine, but it really is a stunning piece for your collection, Kyle. You can't have it, Caitlin. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. <laughs> so, that's going to wrap up today's video. We hope you enjoyed it, and as always, thank you for watching, thanks for caring, and we'll see you in the next one.